Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I begin by thanking and congratulating my <coughs> right honourable friend on obtaining this debate, and also say it's a pleasure to follow the honourable gentleman, the member for Hayes and Harlington. Um, it's not often I say that I agree with what he said, but apart from I think a couple of sentences, I've, I've practically agreed with every word. Um, the BBC spends something like 4.14 mil, uh, million pounds, 400 uh, uh, billion. sorry, billion pounds each year <laughs> on public service content. Um, and of that 4.1 billion, 477 million, just over 10%, goes on radio. And a quarter of that goes on local radio. So it's, it's around 3% of the total BBC spend. Yet what BBC local radio provides mm. is hugely valued by a very large number of listeners. It is an essential local information service and it is very widely trusted. In my own case, now I, I have listened to and appeared on BBC Essex over many years. The presenters of that uh, station are familiar friends to many of my constituents. People like Dave Monk and Sadie Nine and Sonia Watson. You know, people share their living room with them. Um, and they are trusted when they provide uh, news reports. And that was particularly the case during the COVID pandemic, when all the surveys showed that people relied upon and trusted information from local media than almost any others. But it's not just about news. Um, BBC Local Radio does a tremendous amount in terms of community events, in terms of supporting voluntary organisations. Just a few weeks ago, I presented one of the Make a Difference Awards uh, to one of my constituents uh, in Essex, uh, who had been recognised by BBC Essex for a remarkable uh, life-saving uh, piece of bravery she had undertaken. The BBC's mission is to be distinctive and one of its public purposes is to serve the diverse communities of all the UK's nations and regions. And BBC Local Radio does both of those things. And the distinctive requirement is one of the things that BBC Local Radio uh, fits more than a lot of the rest of the BBC. Nobody else does what BBC Local Radio does. There are plenty of very good local radio stations, in my own case, I know you've got Heart Essex, Radio Essex, you've got community stations like Caroline Community Radio, my constituency. But they are predominantly music-based and they don't pretend to provide the kind of talk-based content of a very localised nature, which only BBC Local Radio does. Now, I accept that <coughs> licence fee settlement is difficult this year for the BBC. £159 represents a lot of money for households, particularly at a time when the cost of living is rising, and I think it was the right decision to freeze it. But nevertheless, that has put pressure on the BBC. But firstly, as I said, BBC Local Radio is a tiny proportion of their expenditure. And secondly, the BBC tell us that they're not actually cutting the amount of money that is spent. What they are doing is redirecting it. So £19 million is being taken away from radio and put onto online news. Now, I spoke to Rodri Telfan Davis, the Director of Nations, as to why the BBC had reached that decision. And he told me it was because people no longer are listening to the radio to get their news. More and more, particularly younger people, are now going online. And the BBC somehow had a duty to follow them. Now, first, I think that is profoundly mistaken for two reasons. Firstly, there is still a very significant audience for radio particularly amongst elderly population who often can't get out, who rely upon radio. Uh, yes, of course I'll give way. Well, to the Right Honourable Member for giving way. Uh, and, and I recognise what he is describing around elderly members of his constituency who really depend on local radio. In, uh, with, with BBC Radio Devon, we have uh, Angela Cowates, who does a fantastic show called Stories from the County's Faith Communities. And this is the sort of show that some members of my constituency listen into when they're at the most frail elderly stage of life. They're no longer able to get themselves to, to the local church or chapel and, and they tune in to this program to give them that connection with people who they regard as being local to them. Um, so does he agree with me that, that this move would hit hardest some of the eldest people in our areas? 
I would agree with the honourable gentleman. I, mean, I think, you know, particularly uh, more elderly constituents of, of, of many members in this House will rely on radio and are less familiar with online. They won't necessarily go onto a BBC News website or a commercial website. And they, they, like, they enjoy the fact that they can listen to voices of people they know well um, to provide them with their local news content. And the idea, as has already been said by uh, both uh, my right honourable friend and the honourable gentleman, that this is now going to stop somehow for a lot of the people, uh, country at two o'clock. We're lucky in uh, Essex, it's going to continue until six o'clock in the evening during weekdays. But after that, we become part of a regional network, a show which covers, in my case, Essex, Cambridge, Suffolk, Norfolk, Northamptonshire, and three counties radio, which is another three counties, as it says on the tin. So that's eight counties. Now, I have to say, eight counties is not local radio, and it will re result in a significant reduction in the amount of local content at times when people do want still to be able to access that. The second point I just want to make is that instead of Cutting, uh, w um, in, instead of uh, providing for local radio, the BBC is going to increase its spend on local online news content. Yet that is an area which is already well supplied. Mm. Local news publishers more and more are providing online content. In the cases of existing print-based newspapers, they have websites and also there are now many online only publishers like Nub News, who I referred to actually in the questions earlier this morning. Now they are operating in a very challenging and competitive environment. They're under tremendous economic pressure and already they see the BBC, which provides content for nothing, as being a major competitor to them. And the latest Ofcom survey showed that when people uh, want to go online to access news content, 62% go to the BBC website, 34% to Google, and 10% to any local newspaper site. So already, um, local commercial providers feel the BBC is a threat. And that's why Cancroft, Frances Cancross, in her report, said that the BBC need to think more carefully about how its news provision can act as a complement rather than a substitute for private news provision. And yet this, the area where the BBC is going to invest more, is bound to have an even greater competitive impact on commercial news providers. So I do hope that Ofcom, which has a duty to look at the impact of the BBC's activities, will examine this. I hope that Ofcom will also look at the operating licences for BBC local radio and, if necessary, strengthen them to make sure that they do continue to provide genuine local content, not local content across eight counties. Finally, I would just like to say that if the BBC want to support local news provision, there is a very easy way that they can do so. When I was uh, Secretary of State, I played a small part in the creation of what is called the Local Democracy Reporting Service, where the BBC pays for local journalists who are employed by local news providers to uh, collect and, and distribute local news content across all the local news providers. <coughs> that scheme has been a huge success. It is welcomed right across all the local newspapers. The BBC acknowledge that it is a great success. And so if the BBC want to put more money into local news provision, the way they should be doing it is by increasing their support for the Local Democracy Reporting Service, which works with local newspapers, rather than increasing the amount of the money Money, but they spend competing with local newspapers. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is not for us here to tell the BBC how to spend the, the, um, its money. It is not for the government. But I think that the message which will go out this afternoon is that the BBC has got this wrong and they need to think again.